So we're here to talk through this thermo Sudoku that I constructed. While it is clueless in the sense of no numbers, it's got a lot of thermometer shapes, including some pretty long ones. Um, the center box has uh, exactly one circle in it, which is going to be where the smallest number goes, and it's got two ends, which are where the largest number goes. Um, this one interacts right away with this eight-digit long thermometer, which now can only be two through nine. Uh, the, the smallest bulb had the one removed from it, which actually completely limits it. The gimmick in this thermometer uh, Sudoku is going to be that these uh, digits start to constrain other long thermometer stretches across the grid. And so one space, the star of this puzzle, including having the six, seven goes, is it makes this cell, which used to be as uh, in a range somewhere like five, six, seven were its options, where seven, eight, nine would have been valid. This no longer can be seven, it can no longer be six. And so five is its largest value. That's five away from this end. And so five, four, three, two, one, counting down is forced to get out to this shape. And we can't do more up over here, but we have gotten the start of this uh, thermometer for sure. This center box has two growing sets that are gonna be smallest to largest coming through the ends. Three is the smallest digit not yet in the space and has to be up top. Five is the smallest digit now that's not yet in the space and it can't go in this cell, so it's gotta go in this cell. This cell has to be a six, seven, and with these coming across, this other corner has to be a six, seven, at least behind eight, nine, eight, nine. Two threes leave the third over here. Um, that finishes with a two on the left. We've got a cell that can't be a one and it can't be a two, so one and two up top four down here, got a one over here, and that's uh, very much the star of the puzzle. While this interaction to the right was pretty obvious, there's a trickier interaction with this coming down. Um, this always starts in the puzzle with a pretty broad set of options, as small as four up to as large as eight, and uh, now that eight and seven are here, this can only be as potentially large as six. Um, that means this next cell can be five or smaller. Um, this next cell can be four or smaller. And we come down to the other constraint where the seven, eight interacting here, these clues, this one and three limit the cell to be two or more. And uh, after this is two, the next digit that can come up because the three cancels, this is four. And so there are actually only these four options for these four cells. If this were four, you're going to be five, but now you're out of range. So this must be a two. And going again through this path, uh, four, and then five, and then six, forced from these, are all part of the grid. This two moves over these clues, which now, with these ones interacting, comes in here, one, uh, digit but greater than one less than four has to be a three. Only digits left in the space are seven, eight, nine. The seven, eight say that this is a nine. This is a seven, eight, seven, eight. These three digits are going to come over and interact with this thermometer, it looks pretty sure, but let's actually place uh, some more into the grid first. First, there's a one that's got to dodge these non bald parts of the thermometer. Uh, we've got a three that's going to be in one of these cells. Uh, the twos coming down this column have to uh, sit somewhere in this fourth uh, column, but uh, it's not going to be uh, larger than this digit, so it's going to come back down towards the bulb. This cell actually can't be a three, a four, or a five, so this could be six, seven, seven, eight, and then look at this. We would have said eight, nine, but there's a nine already there, so this is eight, seven, six coming back in space. That's seven here six here. We've still got to place uh, valid options for the rest of this, so let's put a four <coughs> as a clue into here, and now let's come back to this thermometer. So this thermometer at this moment uh, has a, a cell here that can't be a one, it can't be a two, and we now actually have eliminated everything four, five, six, seven, so the three really wants to go here, and that moves this three and four down at least behind a five and nine in the row, which will finish the thermometer. 
this nine has to now fill the last empty space. That then also forces these digits in the center. We've got a six nine pair here. We've got a one eight pair here. And we have the look of what is a four five seven uh, in this space. Let's actually think about that four five seven. The digit that goes here is gonna have to be larger than the next two. A four can't be larger than two more cells when three and two are already taken. Even if this were five, five goes to what number next? Two, three, four, and one are all taken. This is five or larger, so this is seven. And this is four or less than five. We're still gonna to need to do some careful uh, deductions to get this space all clear. And really this five large thermometer here is the shape that we're gonna to need to think the most about. And that's considering a few factors. First, uh, let's think about some of the digits we haven't placed yet. We have a two that's gotta be in this thermometer shape and it can't be in these cells because uh, it, they would have to be larger than digits around it. So the two is here. We've got a three that's gotta be placed in one of these two cells, but it's gotta be larger uh, than the two and smaller than everything else. So that's certainly gonna be here. We now have the five and five and five canceling to leave one option. And that also puts a five right in that corner. We've got to figure out where the one goes and the space, those two options look left for it. We've got a seven, eight, nine that's left here. So this is seven, eight, this is eight, nine. Um, this two actually places this two with this eight. So that's gonna eliminate some of the choices here. So this is a seven, nine. We've got six, seven, nine as the leftover six, seven can go here. So let's still then really come back to uh, what can be next in these spaces. If this is six, seven, eight, that looks okay. If this is seven or higher, eight, nine, that's not. So this has to be four and six in some order. Um, this then can take as much as six, uh, seven and uh, this will end up being eight, nine again. And so we form an eight, nine pair, which is gonna do some stuff to help us, but maybe not enough quickly. I'm gonna come back to this upper left corner then. I actually have two threes placed. And so what I should be trying to do is place the last three in that, in that space, which is there. One and four to go, four up tops. So this is four, this is one. The one interacts with this one eight. These ones interact here. Or one or six. Um, this now has to be the four that I put in it before. Moves this four to the right. Six, seven left over with a six already placed is here. Makes this eight and nine. Makes this seven. This becomes nine. This is eight. Nine with nine and six. Six comes over here. Six and seven. The two sevens are the last place here. We have an eight and a two to place. This is two, eight, eight, seven, and the last digits are six and nine. So a lot of standard Sudoku tracking at the end, but the thermo Sudoku start was very much looking at how this digit forces this thermometer, forces the start of this thermometer, also forces constraints down here, which then uh, places a nine here, which constrains this one and essentially goes from an eight large, seven large, five large, four large, three large, and, and constraining all of those um, through careful greater than less than type deductions. And eventually with most of that set, we could break back into this top space, starting with this two, three, and then I guess getting um, some progress here, this three, this one, this four, forcing enough in that corner to get the rest set. So hopefully it's an enjoyable puzzle. And if it, if, uh, it was something that was stumping you a bit, at least on the most logical path, recognizing how these, these digit pairs force the adjoining things. This was the first set really in the construction that I put in to make sure it played out correctly, including this two, four, five, six, which is a pretty neat narrow elimination. So I hope you enjoyed the puzzle and we'll see you again soon.